for this video, we are going to take a look at multi-view sketching. We would also call this orthographic sketching. And for multi-view sketching, the goal is to take an object such as this and try to draw it from three different sides. We were going to draw a 2D representation instead of a 3D view like you would see in an isometric sketch. We've seen this object before in one of our videos about isometric, but let's talk a little bit about the grid paper. Now, any normal grid paper can work. However, when doing these multi-view sketches, it helps to have quadrants identified on here. To do that, I can take these arrows that are on this, or if I just take a normal grid paper that doesn't have all these extra markings, and I just want to find the center. And when I find the center, I'm just going to take a pencil, and I'm just going to draw down the center with my straight edge. And I'm going to do the same thing across the center going this way in order to create quadrants that I can work in. Or you can look at using a version of the grid paper that's been set up for this. Now when we do a multi-view sketch, we want our grid set up so we have the top view up here, we have the front view here, and the right is going to be off to the side. What goes up here varies a little bit, but a common technique is to put an isometric view up here. That's why we see a very slight isometric grid. Now for this object, I'm identifying this as the front. But what if we don't know what the front is? Well, let's say we take an object such as this. In picking our shape, we want to identify the front as the side that has the most detail or best shows what the object really is. From this angle, this looks like it could be a knife. But when we kind of turn it a little bit, we realize it's actually a paint scraper. So this side best shows what we're looking at compared to this side, this side, or even this side. There, you almost can't even tell what we're looking at. So in that case, we would mark this as the front, and we'd probably say that this is a side view. And then if we turn it, here's our top view. Okay. So when we don't know what the shape is or what the object's front is, look for the side that best shows what it is we're looking at. Okay, so back to our object here. We've identified this as the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up here just as a reference. And in creating a multi-view sketch, what I'm going to do first is let's get an outline here. Okay, So I'm going to use two squares for each of these blocks. And we see that we have four squares across the bottom. So I'm going to come up over here. And I'm going to draw four squares. So one two, three, four. Okay. Then from each of these corners, I'm going to go up one. So let's see, that's going to be two squares here and two squares here. Okay. And I come in one from both sides. So coming in one from both sides, one, one, now from here, the outline, this goes up two squares. So I'm going to go up a total of or two cubes, so four squares. But this side only goes up one cube, so we only want two squares here. And we kind of zigzag our way back. So coming through, we have our there, here and I'm going to go ahead and connect it. So there is our outline. Now, once I have that outline in a multi-view, we're going to treat this as if it's a solid object, which means these five blocks are all on the same level, but these two are not. They're at a different level when I'm looking down. They're at a different distance away from my view angle. So 
I want to represent that. Anything that's on the same, at the same distance from my eyes, we want to draw as solid, and we draw lines to separate the other two. So here, to represent this edge, I'm going to add a line here. And to represent this block, I'm going to come down and over. Or in this case, I'm going to go over and then back up. So now we have our object. We can kind of see one, two, three, four, go up one. And then we see these two blocks are at a different distance away. So from this point, this view appears to be done. So now I'm going to take this object and I'm going to draw the front view. So I'm going to twist it this way and then move. And I'm going to draw the front view up here. And this is where a straight edge becomes helpful. What I'm going to do is I want to follow this edge up because on the front view, this edge would be the same as this edge. So I'm going to, or they're at the same point. They share an edge, a corner here. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to come up to a spot and I'm just going to go ahead and put a dot here. That's going to mark my edge. Now, again, I have four blocks this way. So, and in this case, one block up. So let's go ahead and get this block going back. And let's get the blocks along the bottom here. Now, here's the trick thing. If I follow this edge up, I can follow this edge up. And coming over, I'm going to go right there. And now I can just connect the dots. Okay. So I'm going to go up one. I'm going to come over one from each side. I'm going to go up one, up one. And this time, what I've got is these two, it's just one long stretch across both. And we start to see at first, our shape looked similar, but when we look down, we notice this shape is only one block, two block going from here to here. Whereas from the front, it's actually three. So we get a slightly different shape here. Now again, I've got blocks that are at different heights. So I'm going to have to identify that. So this block is alone. So I'm just going to draw an edge. This block's also separated from these two. So I'm going to one, two, I'm going to draw a vertical line right there. These two are separate and these two are separate. So I can go ahead and draw that line all the way over because I know that this block is separate from here and this block is separate from there. And then again, separating these two. And there we go. There's our view from the top. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to twist it back to the front view. And then I'm going to turn around and twist over to my right view. Now this is a little trickier to hold down, but we see we have two blocks by three blocks total, and this one's only two. So let's do our best here. Maybe I'll uh, I'm going to use another block just to help prop that up, just so we can do this, okay? And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to pick a corner. So here's this corner, and I know I need to go over two, so. One, two. This one I'm going up three. So, one, two, three. Draw my line. I'm going over one. And then down one. Over one down two. Okay, so now we have my shape. And we need to separate the different heights here. So we have one, two, three different heights visible. 
So I know these two are going to be at the same height. So I'm just going to go ahead and isolate those in the drawing. And isolating those also isolates that block. And now I just need to draw these two. So I draw a line across. And there we have what looks to be our right side view. Okay, now we might turn around and argue that this is done, but there's one more problem we have here. If we look, this looks like it's pretty solid all the way around. But if I turn, we realize there's a gap right here. There's no block. We can represent that in the view. And to represent that from the front, this empty spot is behind here. Okay? So I need to find this spot, and that's one over from the left on the bottom in the front view. So there's a gap behind this block. I can't see it, but I know it's there, and we want our drawing to be accurate. So we can use a hidden line to isolate that. And remember, hidden lines are just dashes. So I'm just going to do some short dash marks. And I'm going to do another set of short dash marks here. And what I've done is if I take this apart, what I'm doing is I'm marking the dash for this edge. And I'm marking a dash for this edge. So I'm basically marking here and here in what I'm doing. Okay? Now, if we also look, we know that there's no block here, but this looks solid. So let's go ahead and add our hidden line here. Okay? And at this point, we're pretty good. There is no block here, but there's also no edge. There's just empty space behind it. So there's no need to put any marking there. So from our front view, we still have that empty block, but we're not going to draw a hidden line this time because order of precedence says that an object line, this solid object line, is more important than the hidden line. And since that hidden line and this object line both represent an edge, but the hidden line's down one block, we don't draw a hidden line there. We just leave it as an object line. Okay, so any time that an object line and a hidden line overlap, object line is always more important. Okay, so for the last piece, let's look at our right side view. And in our right side view, we still have that block missing here. We still have an edge right here, or I should say an edge here, and we have an edge here that needs to be represented. Actually, we we'll probably just do this one here. Okay, so for this edge, we have a spot here. So I'm just going to turn around and again add some short dashes. And we've marked that there's a surface here, which is represented by this surface right there behind this block. Okay, no need to put a hidden line here because the object line is more important. And there's nothing behind these blocks, so we don't have to do that there. And that is how we make a multi-view sketch.